Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf into another Bag It or Bin It. It has been a minute since we've done a Bag It or Bin It. This one is Patreon sponsored. However, there are no more Patreon sponsored Bag It or Bin It's after the ones that have already been requested by patrons because the Patreon has changed a little bit. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description to see everything that you'll get. It also includes one additional video per month that is not going to go on this channel just for the Patreon that they get to vote on. But today, we're going to be taking a look specifically at the Infinite Disc Exodus. This looks like it's in their iBlend plastic, which I really like. I have a Faro in this plastic. And we're going to be comparing it to two other straight fairway drivers that basically all three of these are fighting for a place in my bag. The Axiom Crave, which has my shattered van stamp, I actually just ordered some more. MVP Axiom will be coming in within the next month and a half or so, hopefully sooner, uh, as well as the Birdie Disc Golf Supply Strike. And this is the one that's been in my bag for a while. I took it out to beat another one into this perfect level of beat in this. We're going to play nine holes here. They call it the top nine at Bird's Nest Disc Golf Course in Arvada, Colorado. I just got done with the 18, which you guys saw yesterday, but there's a, light, a little nine hole course laid out on this top area here, which is, seems like it's going to be pretty windy but we'll get to see how these do against one another on nine holes. If I can't be par with any of them, they're getting given away. Shouldn't happen, ideally, but you never know with this wind and with just straight seven speeds, even though this is one of my favorite categories that we can get. We'll show you guys from up here because this hole is going to that basket from 350 feet away all the way down there. So it's probably more like a 410 foot shot. Since these guys are gonna get over that hill and a bunch of wind is gonna push them, I think flat to hyzer shot with all of them. We'll go with my strike first because this is my baby. Slight bit of stand up. That might actually get a putt. We'll go Crave next. This is a Fission Crave, it's also max weight. Two nose up. Whew. Throwing up hill is not my specialty. Slight little bit of stand up, pretty similar to the strike, just a little bit more fade. Probably because that strike is a little bit beat in, but it's also one throw. Kind of cool, we're in a little bit of a line. Crave here, Exodus, and Strike. Pretty equidistant too. Oh, I need more circle two practice. I've really been focusing on changing to an inline instead of working on circle two. Oh, not bad. Even though short ones will lift out of your hands with that much of a windage, par, 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 par. No, just three parts. Okay, on to two. All right, hole number two. Interesting. It's straight ahead of us there. It is 337, you just saying. Slight downhill, right to left wind. So we got to leave them out flat right. And once they start the hyzer, the wind will push them back that way. So strike still has the box. There's a slight head. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of hyzer on these guys too. But that's why you get the strike, dude. I love that disc so much. I mean, that's like 15 feet. Still a little low, honestly. Should have put it a little higher. Short. Not by much, though. Oh, we're going to spoil the video here. You got, you got to promise me if I spoil the video that you'll watch it to the end or at least until I bore the crap out of you. But if you find a distance like, like a seven speed, five or six glide, zero to negative one turn, and one or two fade, it's gonna be an incredible disc. <laughs> like, it's gonna be great for beginners, it's gonna be great for pros. I just wanna get my hands on trying all of them, but every time I try one, I'm like, great disc. It's the same, it's a great disc. Like, I haven't really thrown any that I haven't liked, unless it's just a hand feel problem. It's kinda hard to go wrong in this category. I just like showcasing a bunch of the ones that are in here, just like in my other video where I did the FD Stalker and Grackle. But I think all six of these are holding up pretty well. That being said, a little bit flatter for all of them. Leads me under the basket instead of having these 35, 40 footers. Oh, This wind is an interesting wind for putting, just for the record, just for fun, because it's mostly this way, but a little tail. So it's hard to read the tail or the cross, Man, this wind is fun. I really, gotta be honest, I love this course being closest to me here in Denver because it is always windy. If I need to practice some windy putts on some bad baskets, like practice making good putts in the wind, or like practice throwing in the wind, this is a great course for that. It's so hard to get that right. I'm not mad about that being basically a layup. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profiles of these real fast. So here's what we're looking at between these three discs. The strike, honestly, is kind of like your prototypical just like very T-Bird-esque disc. Honestly, this 
and the Athena feel very, very similar. If you've ever held an Athena, it feels very similar to the Strike. This might be slightly deeper though, this way. When we get to the Crave, it's actually even a little bit thinner than the Strike, and the bevel right here is actually a little bit flatter. The Strike has a little bit more of a curve, and it that makes it feel, I think, a little bit thinner, but I think it's also just a little thinner this way. The Exodus is interesting because it's kind of in between. It's thicker, but it also has that straight bevel right down there, so it's not quite as curved as you can see the Strike, which is kind of more T-Bird-esque because it's a little blunter here and then kind of swoops in. Don't know if that's why I think it flies a little further or I don't know. I just really love the feeling of this disc. Whereas these two both feel relatively similar. The Crave is just a little shallower than the Exodus. This way and obviously this way because this is a seven, this is a six and a half. And I think that you can feel the difference a little bit. This just feels like a smaller disc in your hand. And even though I'm very much team baby hands, this still feels a little bit smaller than what I might like. This one, which feels the biggest, maybe because it's still a seven speed and it's small this way, but fills my hand this way, I really like the feeling of this disc. Exodus kind of in the middle, a little bit slick on this plastic right here, but overall still a really good disc. All of them are just good seven speed fairways though. All right, 330, looks like we're going straight there then to the left to that yellow rimmed basket. Same order. Okay, push it a little deep, maybe slightly more hyzer and trust that it'll stand up a bit. I decided instead to throw an Anheuser and softer. Not the worst solution, honestly. Just not what I said I was gonna do. My body kinda took over in that one. Really like that shot, actually. That just slipped right out of my hands. A little deep. And we finally got a birdie on the card. Birdie par bogey, woof, gross. Alrighty, 337 it says to another, looks like maybe a disc catcher in of a guy. <sighs> Crave took the box. Crave's a good disc, man. It's a lot of good molds out there nowadays. Gotta get a couple birdies with the Exodus. <sighs> I think we're just gonna try to go straight at him because there is a headwind. Slight hyzer straight at it. Oh yeah, there's a headwind. Wow, slightly nose up, because I didn't really push through that, but okay, thanks for being the wind dummy, you freaking crave. There we go. More hyzer, more left, more park job. Oh, uh, maybe not, it didn't quite get back. Definitely is not as flippy as that crave. That crave, I think, is the flippiest one of the bunch. Why you throw it so nose up, dude? Why you throw it so bad? Not bad. Poor time for the Exodus again. Not the end of the world. Finish it out and then go find the Crave. Headwind again. There we go. Oh, there's a look. Not a good one, but a look. Floated. Oh, not bad. All right, pull 23 is our hole five. It is 490 feet. That was not Anheuser at all. I'm a little afraid of these steep heads. It's not the end of the world. A little nose up again. <clears throat> Pretty good. None of those are crazy, but I mean, basically those are all just, let's throw it over 300 feet and then get up and down for par. <clears throat> Please get lefter. No! <laughs> Missed the upshot the other way. <laughs> Yikes. That's devastating. That's so bad. I don't want to flick that again because that would count as a practice stroke for this strike, but geez. Wow, so bad still. I'm gonna be real. It is not looking good for the Exodus. This is 450 feet. Gonna have to basically give them full flights, full flexes. Slightly downhill. If I throw them well, I might be able to get there, but this T-pad has some divots and stuff in it, which does not bode well. Strike has the box, nice and simple. <laughs> little nose up, a little bad, but really not that bad. Really not that bad. <laughs> I'm 
that's worse. I'm trying to think about why that's worse in my form, but it's slightly worse. No, <laughs> get stable. Oh, Anthony. That was the worst one by far. So I might have a putt from that strike, but the Crave has nothing. The Exodus, I think, is somewhere over there. It has nothing, I'm guessing, but a little pitch up forehand here. Nice shot. Let's go. I mean, it's technically possible. Not probable. Do it. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, so I guess there's kind of a putt, but... So bad, Anthony. Oh, that's so stupid. Why did I do that? Well, I could have just thrown it in. No, we're just, what the heck was that putt? Had to have been relatively close. Stay up. So lazy. Both are bad. All right, two more holes. I need another birdie with the strike now because I'm stupid. You just says 230, T signs say 272 straight ahead. I feel like T signs a bit more accurate, but we're just gonna use some depth perception. Won't even break out the rangefinder. Too much. It's fine. It's a putt. Yeah. Get a little skip. Oh, it's not gonna get left enough. Not bad. Too flippy? Oh no. Not enough hyzer. All right, everything's inside the circle. Nothing is crazy good. All right, Exodus, we need an ace, buddy. All right, we got 360 straight up the hill. Wind coming from the left to the right, so we're gonna have to put some hyzer, let it flip and do its thing. Basically, with the crave, it doesn't matter. We can like triple bogey or double bogey and be fine. But we need par with strike. Doesn't matter with Exodus if we don't ace, so gotta go for that. That thing is definitely flippier. Put that on a little hyzer. Crave is definitely flippier. Not the best shot though. Strike. <laughs> that's so bad too, but that's okay. Get up and down for par, be happy. I am like messing everything up right now. Exodus. God, all right. I tried to throw through that early. I tried to throw through that too early. Hopefully we get one birdie or something. Right, this is not a gimme up and down. Great shot, really good. This doesn't matter, well none of these matter really. It's not an ace, go in. Ah. Get up, get up, oh good height. Once I miss that strike, the exodus is going to my patron and uh, that's about it for today. Pretty poor showing, honestly, on this back a little bit. Is that like a quadruple bogey? Whatever. Oh my gosh. That's the one that mattered for here. I'm gonna have to say, like, I don't think my opinion on these has changed much throughout today, which is good. That means I know my discs. Uh, Exodus going to the patron. Great disc, I think. Not for me though. It, the hand feels just a little bit different and I just prefer something like this strike. I don't know why, but I do. Uh, strike, one of my favorite molds ever, honestly, right now. Don't know what it is about it, but I love it. I think the glow one's coming out soon, which I'm excited to review. And then Crave, great disc, definitely flippier than these two. Everything will be a little more flippy at sea level too, but super solid. If you wanna see my last seven speed comparison, check that out right down here. Another Patreon sponsor, Bag It or Bin It. If you wanna join the Patreon for all those benefits, check that out. If you wanna subscribe, do that. If you wanna like the video, do that. Okay, love you guys, bye. Great discs.